on my site explainingmaths.com, uh, one of you has asked me the question uh, well, how to find the nth term rule of this particular sequence, yeah? 4, 7, 12, 19, 28. But before we have a look at this particular sequence, I just want to remind you how do we find the nth term sequence of, let's say, easier um, sequences. So let's have a look at 6, 8, 10, 12, for instance. Now, what would you do? What is your approach? You always look at what is the term to term rule. Yeah, and that is plus 2, as you can see. Yeah, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. And then you write down, so 2 times n, yeah, so the term to term rule times n. And you'll have a look at the first term. Is your first term 2? And if not, by what do I have to plus or minus 2 in this case to get 6? And then you would say, well, I have to do plus 4 eh, to go from 2 to 6. Yeah? And that is your nth term rule, 2n plus 4. Now, we always check that for, let's say, term 3. So n is a 3, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, and indeed my third term is 10. Okay, but th this is for sequences where the term-to-term -term rule is constant. So that is something we've done a long time ago. I'm going to have a look now at this sequence. I'm going to write it out, but a little bit bigger. Uh, 4, 7... 12. I'm only going to write down the first three terms, okay, because more I don't... Well, you know what? I'm going to... Um, um, I'm going to take that away, and I am going to write down a little bit more. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to write down 4, 7, 12, 19, 28. Let me write down all the terms so I can show you properly. Okay, what is the term-to-term -term rule? Yeah, so I'm going to start again. That is plus 3. Uh, but that is not plus 3, that is plus 5. And that is plus 7. And as you can see, the term to term rule is not constant as it was with that previous question. Eh? Here it was plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 every time. But now it's plus 2, uh, sorry, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7, plus 9, so it's not constant. Well, don't worry, don't panic. You're just going to do it again. So, what is the term to term rule here from 3 to 5? That is plus 2. And what is the term to term rule from 5 to 7? That is plus 2. And from 7 to 9, that is plus 2. Good. And as you can see now, you have a constant term to term rule. Now, you have to continue doing this for whatever sequence you get until you have a constant term to term rule, as we have right now. Okay, very good. I want to move this up. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Fantastic. Look at that. Okay, because I need my space here. All right. Now, Considering, considering it uh, took us two, um, two rows to get a constant term to term rule, our nth term rule is going to look like a quadratic expression. So it's going to be of the format a times n to the power 2 plus bn plus c. Okay, because we have two of those rows, it's going to be a quadratic expression. Yeah? Now the question is, what are the values of a, b and c? And we are going to find that out. Now, if I look at um, my first term, it's a 4. Can I put that here? Okay, it's a 4. Now, for my first term, so n is 1. If I substitute 1 into this expression, I'm going to get, so 1 squared is 1. So a plus b plus c. So for my first term, this is going to be a plus b plus c. Good. For my second term, yeah, if I put for n equals 2, perhaps you want me to write that down, I'm going to get a times 2 squared, yeah, plus uh, b times 2, plus c. So hopefully you agree with me, that's going to give me 4a, that's a 4, 4a, plus 2b, plus c. Yeah, and I'm also going to do that for my third term. So if I substitute 3, in this expression for n, what am I going to get? I'm not going to write it out. Yeah, maybe you want to find it out, but 3 squared is 9a plus 3b plus c. Okay, I only have to do that for three terms, okay? Can I take this away? No, I can't. Okay, let's continue. Uh, I only have to do that for three terms, so please don't continue just wasting your time. Now, the difference between my first term and my second term is 3. So if I look at the expression, the difference, 
Yeah, so 4a minus a, or if I would write down the difference here, so 4a plus 2b plus c minus a plus b plus c, yeah, which is this one, that has to equal that has to equal 7 minus 4, so that is 3, yeah? So 4a minus a, that is 3a, I'm going to write that down there, 2b minus b, that is a positive b, 1b, yeah? And c minus c is 0, that's gone. And 7 minus 4 is 3, so the expression 3a plus b is going to give me 3, that will equal to 3. I'm going to do the same between term 2 and term 3. 9a minus 4a, so I'm looking at the difference, is 5a. 3b minus 2b, that is going to be b. And c minus c again is 0, so that one is gone. So 5a plus b equals 5. And let me continue one more time into this direction. Let's look at the difference. 5 minus 3 is 2, the difference is 2. So 5a minus 3a, so the difference is 2a, and b minus b is 0. Okay, interesting. Which conclusion can I draw now? And I have to find some place somewhere to write this down. Where can I do that, guys? Um, I'm going to move it. Do we see that? I'm moving it a little bit. You can go away. Okay. Uh, which conclusion can I draw now? I can say that 2a equals 2. So I'm going to write down that 2a equals 2. And therefore, a equals 2 divided by 2. So a equals 1. Let me put a little box around that. That is important. So my a is 1. That a is 1. If a is 1, how much is b? Well, I can use that expression because I say, or equation... I have said that 3a plus b equals 3, yeah? So if a is 1, 3 times 1 plus b equals 3. So 3 plus b equals 3, so b equals 0, indeed. So b equals 0. Let me put a little box around that, very good. And a bit of a division, okay, a is 1, b is 0. How much is C? Well, now I can use my first expression um, over there where I said that A plus B plus C needs to be 4. Okay, so A plus B plus C equals 4. So 1 plus 0 plus C equals 4. Yeah, I'm substituting those values now in my expression. And if you work it out, you're going to get C equals 3. Fantastic. So I have found out the value now of A, B, and C. Because it took me two of those rows, I know it's a quadratic expression. So my final step is, can I move that like this? Yes, I can. Go up, go away, you back. Yeah, so A n squared plus B n plus C is going to look like 1 n squared, because A is 1, so I can just write down n squared plus B is 0, yeah, so uh, 0 B, so that's gone, plus C, and C is 3, so plus 3. So that is going to give me the end term rule of my sequence. Okay, now if I just very quickly go back to that sequence and um, just get rid of all my workings, uh, there we go. I want this one over here. So that was my final solution over here. Let me just check that yeah, because we always check our work. For let's say the first term, so n squared is 1 plus 3 is 1 plus 3 is 4. Fantastic. The second term, 2 squared is 4 plus 3 is 7. Very good. The third term, 3 squared 9 plus 3, 9 plus 3 is 12. Very good. What about the fifth term? 5 to the power 2, 25 plus 3, 28. Fantastic. The end of term rule for a sequence which does not have a constant term to term rule. Good. I hope that was useful. Check my site explainingmaths.com for more resources and perhaps you have questions which you can ask me there as well. I'll see you later. Bye bye.